In this video, we're going to talk about um, the SPDF sublevels. Um, what we need to know is that S has a spherical shape, it's like a sphere. P has a, a dumbbell shape, it can be drawn both ways. D is like a clover leaf. And F has some unusual shape which varies, and I really don't want to go over that. But some things you need to know the number of energy levels is equal to the number of sublevels. So when n is 1, you only have one sublevel, S. When n is 2, you have two sublevels, S and P. When n is 3, you have three sublevels, 3S, 3P, 3D. When n is 4, there are four sublevels, 4S, 4P, 4D, and 4F. The S sublevel <coughs> can hold up to two electrons. And you need to know that every orbital um, can hold up to two electrons. So S has uh, one orbital. Now in a periodic table, the S block is really the first two columns, group one and group two. So that's the S block. P can hold up to six electrons. If you notice the P block in the periodic table, it's like group 13 to group 18. You can see those six elements there. P can hold up to six electrons. And because every orbital can hold up to two electrons, uh, P has three orbitals. D can hold up to 10 electrons. The elements in the D block, starting with like, um, you have like zinc, copper, nickel, those are in the 3D sublevel. And, and if you look at the periodic table, there's 10 elements there. D can hold up to 10 electrons. And so the D sublevel has five orbitals. F can hold up to 14 electrons, and F has seven orbitals, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So those are some things you want to keep in mind. By the way, whenever you have the S sublevel, L is equal to zero. For the P sublevel, L is equal to one. For D, L is equal to two, and for F, L is equal to three. So you need to be familiar with these four quantum numbers, N, L, M, L, and M, S. We talked about N already. This is the main principal energy level. L represents the sublevel, which is associated with S, P, D, and F. M, L, it specifies the orbital. S has one orbital, and it has a value of zero. P has three orbitals and it has a value of negative 1, 0, and 1. D has 5 orbitals, which varies between negative 2 and 2. We're going to talk about that soon. MS represents the electron spin. Inside an orbital, you can have an up arrow, which stands for plus 1 half, or you can have a down arrow, which has an electron spin of negative 1 half. So let's talk about how to identify these quantum numbers. Let's say if you want to identify the four quantum numbers for the 3p5 electron. n is going to be this number, n is 3. Now, p will tell you what the value of l is. Keep in mind, for s, l is 0. For p, l is 1. For d, l is 2. For f, l is 3. Now, p has uh, three orbitals, as we talked about. and because L is 1, ML is going to vary between negative 1, 0, and 1. Now we want to, we're focused on the fifth electron. So here's the first electron, second, third, fourth, fifth. The fifth electron lands in this orbital where ML is 0. So therefore, ML is 0. MS is negative a half because the fifth arrow points down. You always start by drawing the arrows up and then down. So those are the four quantum numbers that correspond to the 3p5 electron. Let's try two more examples. Let's try 4d4. n is 4. And for d, l is 2, because for s, l is 0, for p, l is 1. And for f, l is 3. Now the d sublevel has five orbitals. And so ML can vary between negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, because L is 2. So here's the first arrow, second, third, fourth. 
we're interested in the fourth arrow and it landed on the orbital that has a value of one and because it's an up arrow the spin is positive one half all right for the sake of practice let's try one more example let's focus on the 5f13 electron so n is 5 L is 0 for S, L is 1 for P, L is 2 for D, for F, L is 3. And for the F sublevel, there are 7 orbitals. And ML can vary between negative 3 and 3 because L is 3. So we're interested in the 13th electron. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, there it is. And it landed in this orbital, so ML is 2. And it's a down arrow, so the electron spin is negative half. So that's how you could find the four quantum numbers uh, given the electron. Now, Pauli's exclusion principle states that no two electrons can have the same set of four quantum numbers. As you can see, these quantum numbers are unique for each electron. This one electron has its, a unique set of four quantum numbers. So if you're given these four quantum numbers, you can identify what electron we're talking about. Let's try that. So let's say, for example, if uh, n is 3, l is 2, ml is 1, and ms is negative a half. What electron are we talking about? What, which electron is identified by these four um, unique quantum numbers? So we know we're in the third energy level. When L is 0, it's S. When L is 1, it's P. When L is 2, it's D. So we're in the 3D sublevel. D has five orbitals. And because L is 2, it varies between negative 2 and 2. Excuse me. Now we know that the electron is in this orbital because ML is 1. And we know the arrow has to be a down arrow. So let's count it. 1, 2, 3, start with the up arrows, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There is our down arrow. So these four quantum numbers correspond to the 3D9 electron. Now let's talk about electron configuration and orbital notations and so forth. Let's say if you want to write the electron configuration for, let's go with uh, phosphorus. Now, if I remember correctly, I believe phosphorus has 15 electrons. Let me just take a minute and verify that with a periodic table. And yeah, that's correct. Now, the first energy level only has one sublevel. The second energy level has two sublevels. The third energy level has three sublevels, so 3s, 3p, 3d. The fourth energy level has four sublevels. So let's say if you want to write the electron configuration for phosphorus. The configuration, the exponents, has to add up to this atomic number. Now keep in mind, S can hold up to 2 electrons, P can hold up to 6, D can have up to 10, F can have up to 14. And we're going to write it until the exponents add up to 15. So let's begin. So 1S can hold up to 2 electrons, 2S can also hold up to 2, 2P can hold up to 6 electrons, and 3s can hold up to 2. So right now we have 2 plus 2, which is 4, plus 6, which is 10, plus 2, 12. We only need 3 more. 3p can hold up to 6, but because we only need 3 more, we're going to stop at 3p3. This is the electron configuration for phosphorus. Now, let's say if you're given a question and they ask you, how many s electrons are in phosphorus? After you write the configuration, you can answer the question. So there are six s electrons in phosphorus, because if you add up the x points, you get six. If they ask you, hey, how many p electrons are in phosphorus? Simply add the p electrons. Six plus three, there are nine p electrons in phosphorus. Now let's refresh the page, but let's keep the information that we have. So we said the electron configuration for phosphorus is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and 3p3. But now let's write the orbital notation um, for phosphorus, or the orbital diagram. 
So this is the 1s orbital. s has only one orbital. Here we have 2s, 3s. Notice I keep it in the same column. Then to the right of that, just above 2s, we have 2p, which has three orbitals, and 3p. Now, as you go up, the potential energy increases. Now, according to Aufbau's principle, um, you need to add the electrons in increase in order, which means you start from the lowest energy level and then you go up to the highest energy level. So we have to start with 1s. We put the first electron here. We don't put the next one in 2s. You have to put the next one in 1s. You have to go in order. That's off boss principle. 2s2 is filled. Now, according to Hund's rule, whenever you're filling electrons in degenerate orbitals, you have to fill them one at a time. The word degenerate means that the energy is equal. So these three orbitals have equal energy because they're at the same height. So therefore, they are degenerate orbitals because they have the same energy. So whenever you're adding electrons here, you add it one at a time according to Hund's rule. So one, two, three, four, five, six. 2p6 is filled. So next, according to Aufbau's principle, we move into 3s, not 3p, because we have to go in order of increase in energy or increase in potential energy. So 3s2, and then based on Hund's rule, for degenerate orbitals, which are energy levels at the, which are orbitals that have the same energy, we have to fill these um, orbitals one at a time. So one, two, three. That's how you fill the orbital diagram for an element. Write the electron configuration first, then put the arrows in. So that's it for this video. Um, I think we covered a lot. And uh, I have other videos on quantum numbers, so feel free to search YouTube for those. And uh, so that's all I got for today. That's my two cents. And